Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So today I am outside because we're going to be produ producing a chemical known as chloroform or trichloromethane. Now, this is a very simple synthesis, however it is relatively dangerous as chloroform can cause you to pass out and cause other harmful effects to your body if inhaled in large quantities. So despite me having a fume hood in my room, I still don't really want to be doing this inside just in case something bad were to happen. It's best to do this far away, in an isolated corner, where nobody is hopefully going to go over and start sniffing the chloroform that we're producing. Anyhow, this is very simple to actually produce. We just need some sodium hypochlorite solution and some acetone. Now, sodium hypochlorite solution can either be purchased as bleach, extra strength bleach, which is just a higher concentration, or this chlorinating liquid, which I purchased at Canadian Tire. It was $10 for 5 liters of stuff, and it is 10.8% concentrated, the highest concentration that I could find. So this is what we will be using today, as it will probably be the most ideal, um, just due to the uh, higher concentration. So we'll be able to get lots of it, hopefully. So, first thing we have to do is actually chill our uh, sodium hypochlorite solution because this reaction is indeed exothermic and can cause the chloroform to boil and we can have losses um, unless we chill it. So uh, this has been chilled to about negative 18 degrees Celsius which is the temperature of our deep freeze freezer. Um, it is of course still liquid and um, so we will now take all of this uh, sodium hypochlorite solution and transfer it to the large glass container at the back. I'm doing this in a glass container so you can actually see what's happening. Um, but if you wanted to, you could also just do it inside the bottle. But for demonstration purposes, it's much cooler to see it inside the actual, con like an actual clear container. So I'm going to empty all of that into there, then I'll meet you back. Okay, so now that it's all been added, um, you can see the glass is, uh, caused a or has a lot of condensation on it due to the very cold temperature. But the next ingredient is simply going to be acetone. So we're going to measure out, for this concentration and this amount of uh, sodium hypochlorite solution, I found it to be approximately 182 milliliters of acetone. Now, this is actually not enough to fully react with all the sodium hypochlorite. However, we don't want an excess of acetone, because an excess of acetone can form an azeotrope with the chloroform, which will be difficult to separate later when we distill it. So it's better to use an excess of sodium hypochlorite, as that won't uh, affect our chloroform's purity in the end. So, I will quickly measure out 182 milliliters of acetone and meet you back for the addition. You'll also probably want a glass stir rod or some other stirring thing so that we can actually mix this around when we add it. Because uh, we do have to get a u uniform mixture of it before, of course, we react it. Or else we're going to end up uh, with a lot of it heating up at the top and boiling away, which would be bad. So, I'll quickly measure those things out and then I'll meet you back. So, now we will add it and stirred around vigorously as the reaction occurs. So we'll add it all at once quickly, then very quickly begin to stir it before the reaction takes off. We want this acetone throughout the entire solution. So I'll probably end up cutting it here and meet you back as soon as all of this has been mixed around. Okay, so as we can see, the uh, liquid has now become cloudy as we have a suspension of finely divided chloroform. And um, that isn't just ice on the surface, I just rubbed off all the ice that was created. Um, that is actually what it looks like. So there's very finely divided droplets of chloroform in there, and I can actually kind of smell it a bit. Um, chloroform's odor is kind of difficult to smell like, it just kind of smells like chloroform, I guess. Anyhow, so we're going to finish letting this all settle out to the bottom, which will take a couple of hours, and I'll meet you back. First, we'll cover the top with saran wrap, and that way no or less losses will be um, happening. So yeah, I'll meet you back then. Okay, so that was pretty chaotic. It's finally under control. Oh my gosh. So, that was at negative 18 degrees Celsius, and the, from the addition of the 182 milliliters of acetone, the temperature suddenly jumped up to over 70 degrees Celsius, and the chloroform started boiling, which is terrible. So I had to grab a bunch of ice and throw in all the ice, and anyhow, it's under control now. And at the bottom there, you can see we have a nice layer of chloroform that has settled out, which is exactly what we wanted. So we might have had a bit of loss, but I got it under control pretty quickly, and I don't think we actually lost too, too much chloroform, which was good. So, if you guys are going to do this on your own, I highly suggest that you take probably a pound of ice and put it into your uh, um, sodium hypochlorite solution before the addition of acetone, as the reaction is extremely exothermic and can easily take off and reach temperatures greater, great enough to actually boil the chloroform, which is very dangerous. 
So, that's my one piece of advice for you guys. And uh, we'll fully let this settle out till this top part is also clear. And uh, then we'll be able to collect all the chloroform and see how much we have. So I'll do that, then I'll meet you back. Okay, so as soon as everything settled to the bottom of that large jar, I simply uh, decanted off the upper layer and saved the chloroform layer, transferred it to a separatory funnel, and separated it off. And we are now distilling it. And you can hear my siblings laughing in the background, sorry. Anyhow, so we're distilling it, it boils at about 60 degrees Celsius, and it's all coming over, I just have it th running through a fractal column. And um, it's all collecting over there, so as soon as we're done distilling it, then uh, I'll show you the final product. There was some murky white stuff that came over at the start, and I just transferred that to that jar over there, because that's impure. So I'll finish it up, then I'll meet you back. Okay, so after the distillation was complete, I took it out of the flask and transferred it into this small vial here. So here's all of our trichloromethane, or chloroform, and this is actually kind of dangerous, not, not just because it could leak and make you get knocked out and then you'd suffocate and die, but also because it slowly degrades over time into deadly phosgene gas, which is very, very toxic. And to prevent the formation of phosgene gas, um, A, it should be stored in an amber glass bottle or something to protect it from the sunlight. You could also wrap aluminum foil around it. And B, a little bit of absolute ethanol should be added, which prevents the formation of phosgene gas. So I simply took I, probably a mm, couple milliliters of 100% uh, pure alcohol um, or ethanol which I simply dehydrated using potassium carbonate because we made some 95% stuff in a previous video. So I dehydrated it to 100% using potassium carbonate and then just added a couple milliliters of it to this uh, trichloromethane here to stabilize it. So hopefully it will not be forming any deadly phosgene gas, but if you do open this, um, I would recommend opening it outside or in a fume hood and not in an enclosed space. Anyhow. Uh, chloroform tri or trichloromethane is a very useful solvent and we will most likely be using it in future applications. So that's basically how to make it. It's very simple, quick, and easy, and I hope you guys enjoyed. So I'll see you in a future video. Wait, bye.